So welcome to a new GameStop episode, and I have quite a few super nostalgic items that I picked up, and also a lot of newer games as well, so hold out for those. I will ask you guys, what's some new game stuff that you've picked up recently? Some new games, some new merch, let me know, and everybody else down below. So let's start off in the beginning. I'm telling you so many cool things to talk about today, and the first one is right here. And it's very rare that I actually go back into the past and buy a boxed game on the Turbo Graphics. I, it's very rare that I do that. But I decided to do that for this particular game here. And that is Legendary Axe from 1989 on the Turbo Graphics 16, a game of my childhood. And I have my original copy. But of course, back then, because people were crazy, we just threw out the boxes or got rid of the boxes afterwards. I don't know what was going on with that. We didn't think that we'd ever use them again or it would ever matter to us until you get into your late 40s and you're like, man, I love Legendary Axe. And yeah, you play as a caveman in a prehistoric world fighting spiders and bears and all sorts of different creatures, bats, and you go through all these different prehistoric levels and the music is super nostalgic, the entire game is just means a lot to me. And when I think about my youth now and in high school in like 1989, I always think back to Legendary Axe and what a great game it was. And I, I think this game still holds up incredibly well for anybody out there who's kind of you know on the fence of like, should I try that game out? Yeah, give it a shot. It holds up, it's a great action platforming game. <laughs> Now the next two items I didn't even know existed and I pride myself on knowing that certain things exist, especially in the retro world and especially to series that I love. I didn't know this existed and I want to thank my friend Clayton for mentioning this to me and showing this to me. The Dragon Warrior Strategy Guide. I didn't even know this was a thing and I'm like... Oh my god, I, I love it. This is obviously Dragon Quest 1 uh, from 1988 when it was brought over here. And I've told the story many times of my sister and her boyfriend taking me across this, you know, into the States uh, to Bellis Fair, a mall in the States there, and going to a little kiosk place called Famcom Games. Can't believe it's 1988, it's so crazy, like 35 years ago. I'm picking up my copy of Dragon Warrior 1, and what a legendary game. It is, it was then, and it is now. And uh, to have another piece of the puzzle of the Dragon Warrior you know, franchise, to, to have this piece of this incredible uh, blast from the past strategy guide is awesome. And especially hearkening back to those early, early days. And so this is really neat. And what's fascinating too, it comes with a map uh, of another favorite game. Me and Rob finished this a couple of years ago. And that's for Willow. And here's the map for Willow. And I, I really appreciate that. It's a lot of people can get the strategy guide, but the map is the thing that everybody seems to kind of miss out on. And so uh, very happy to get that. And yeah, I never even knew there was a strategy guide for Dragon Warrior back in the day. I didn't particularly need it. The game was easy, but cool to have. So that was a real gem. Now I've written uh, this on here so I didn't forget my friend. Nintendo, Nintendo, another great guy on YouTube. And I was watching his channel, small YouTube channel, Retro, and he had this thing on. He showed some strategy guides from back in the day. And I'm like, oh wow, okay, so he's showing some strategy guides. And he showed something, and I was like, oh my god. I left a comment. I'm like, what is that? I didn't even know that existed because it's from my favorite. Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior game of all time, a strategy guide was released back in the day. I didn't even know it. For Dragon Warrior 4 on the NES. I want to thank Nintendo for bringing this to my attention. And I had to go and snag a copy. I was like, I gotta grab this for sure. This is way too amazing. And so, yeah, and flipping through this, I'm like, this is great. And you know what? I could have used this strategy guide back in the day for some of the dungeons and things like that. And this is great. This is something, this is a, like a, a treasure from the early 90s and one that I didn't know existed. So you know what we're gonna do? Let's do something really nice. Let's go down below and click 
on the link and subscribe to Nintendjul. Yes, he's a smaller YouTuber. He has no idea I'm gonna do this. Let's all go and subscribe to him. This will really make his day. This will really make his day. And go in and leave a comment on his latest video saying how awesome he is. Wouldn't that be cool? That's a cool thing to do. That's something where we can give a bit of, you know, good karma back there into the universe and make somebody happy today. Let's go and do that. Let's go and make somebody's day. You know, like Nintendo, for sure. Smaller YouTuber out there, you know, just really passionate, trying to show all the things that he really enjoys. And there's so many people in the YouTube world now. Let's go and do something good for him. Let's go and subscribe and leave an amazing comment for Nintendo. Okay, this game is 25 years old and I rented it. I rented it and I rented it for one reason only. I'm gonna show it. I got a copy of Brave Fencer Musashi on the PS1. I know a lot of you out there are going, what, you didn't own it already? I know, I know, it's been one of those ones that I keep saying, yeah, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. And then the price went really high, and then I found it on eBay for really low. I, I didn't question the person, I just bought it, and I got a, I think a bit of a steal on it for sure. Uh, this is a great game from the good old Squaresoft days, and you know, kind of an action platforming game where you play as a samurai. This game was awesome, and my friend Satan at the time, he, he actually bought a copy and he went all the way through it and he was always telling me every day how much he enjoyed Brave Fencer and I'm like, oh my God, I, you know? So what I did back then, I rented it, I played it for a bit and I liked it, but it came with the Final Fantasy VIII demo there. This was the reason why I rented it, to play a demo. Now you can just download a demo, but back then you had to get a physical, you know, CD copy of the demo, which is right here. And I got that and I played, I must have played the Final Fantasy VIII demos like a thousand times. No joke from back then. So, very happy to get Brave Fence and Musashi. Super cool. What do you guys think about that game? Any fans out there? What, can you believe it's 25 years? Ridiculous. <laughs> Now, okay, before we get into the games, I had to pick up this. The 8-Bit Do. The 8-Bit Do is a, like a TurboGrafx PC Engine wireless controller. And I picked this up because I snagged an analog. Do you guys know what that is? It's a PC Engine TurboGrafx you know, kind, of, kind of hybrid that's coming out later this year. And I, I have to get it because I'm such a big PC Engine fan. And it will be such a great way to play all my PC Engine games. And now I can play them wirelessly with this great TurboGrafx PC Engine controller. So I don't know when the analog, uh, the PC Engine analog is like shipping sometime this year. So I'll let you know. I'll probably do a video on that because it's, it's really su such a big deal. Okay, next up, the Quarry. Now I picked up a bunch of games here because they were on sale. And this game was on sale. I've heard a lot of great things about this from some of my friends, saying this is a great game to play at Halloween and things like that. And I was like, okay, I'm going in. I have no idea what this is gonna be, uh, you know, what's gonna be about. But I know Kim gets so freaked out about, you know, like scary games and things like that. So I'm like, oh yeah, we've, we've probably got to play this. So I'm gonna try to make some time for that one for sure. I hate horror. Okay, this is one that I did pick up from uh, Fan Gamer. And that is for Tunic. A physical copy of Tunic was finally released. And myself and Rob, we love this game. Rob really loved this game. I think this is like game, game of the year. And yes, yeah, she plays a little fox. It's a, it's a, it is a Zelda clone for sure, but it's a wonderful one. And you go through the levels and, and uh, you know, unlock things and find different pages to your strategy guide that's built into the game itself. So you don't have to get that separately. They incorporate it into the game, and that's what's so great here. And there's a lot of charm, there's a lot of love, and I, I was saying at the time, I can't wait to get a physical copy of Tunic, and it was finally released, and yeah, very, very exciting to get that. What do you guys think of Tunic? Have you played that game? I, I first played it on Game Pass, and I, I really loved it. Okay, another game that came out as being you know really cheap. A lot of people linked me to this on Twitter and said, hey, it's, this game's super cheap. You gotta try it out. It's like Fantasy Star. And so I wanna thank you all for you know showing me that game. And that is for Undernauts, Labyrinth of Yami, or Yami. Yeah, it's some, something like that. I had seen this game a long time ago. 
And uh, I was like, I don't know. It's kind of like a, a 3D dungeon exploration, you know, you know, like RPG where you get into combat, you see the characters on screen. Very much so like Fantasy Star in that regard. And seeing this game and kind of what it is, it's very dark. It's very un-Fantasy Star in that regard. But very interesting, and I want to thank everybody for, you know, bringing this to my attention. I finally got Undernauts at a really reasonable price. Okay, another game that was on sale. Everybody told me, you've got to get this game, John. You've got to get this game. It's like Earthbound. You say that to me? Earthbound? I'm in. I'm like totally in. And that's for a little game called Eastward. I'm going to ask you guys, have any of you played this game? Give me your recommendations down below. I'm really going to be reading and listening to you guys of what you think about this game. It's so charming. I love the pixelated graphics. And yeah, it gives me Earthbound vibes. I haven't tried it myself. I really want to hear what you guys think about this game. But it's kind of a really nice like exploration side of it. And just looks really, really charming. And the price dropped on this hardcore. And I was like, now, now is the time to jump in. Okay. Speaking of jumping in, I had to get this. Raiden 4. Raiden 4. A great overhead shoot 'em up style of game from back in the day. There's been quite a few of them. And I'm building up a bit of a Switch, you know, shmup collection now. I'm really enjoying collecting shmups on the Switch for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I had to pick up this game. And uh, yeah, very cool uh, to add it to the collection. Okay, this was a buy because it went so cheap. It went to like $25 here in Canada, which is really great. And I recommend this to anybody who uh, wants to jump into this. And that is for R-Type Final 2. A great shoot 'em up here on the PS4. Yes, R-Type Final 2 is a game that I spent a lot of time on. And it's very difficult at times, but it's one of those things, the more you play it, the better you get, obviously. And some of the bosses in this game are really, really great. Spent a lot of time playing this and I thought, you know what? I just want to add this to the collection because it was really cheap. I recommend this for anybody who likes shooters, side view shooters. You're not going to go wrong with R-Type Final 2. Okay, this was reposted on a video game website and I missed it the first time. This was a limited run game and then I guess, I don't know what happens with the limited run, that some of these special editions that they created, they say they sell out and then all of a sudden they're on other video game sites. I don't quite understand how that works because I thought it was a limited run on it. But I was kind of glad to pick this up uh, and that is for Valus. And this is the Valus, uh, you know, collection. The first one, I missed out on this. I imported a Switch version of the collection and I thought, okay, I'm good with that. But no, I really, I really like Valus, and let me let me talk about Valus for a second. I was playing the third one today, and I was collecting some footage for this, just for the pure fun of doing that, and just to kind of revisit it. And I wanted to talk about you know, why Valus is really cool and why I, I personally like it. Is Valus a series that I would recommend to anybody? No, I don't think it's a particularly great controlling action game. It's not for that reason. You had to be there at the time, and Ballas' claim to fame was, yes, it was an action game, but it realistically was that you're controlling these anime girls, and uh, you had amazing cinematics, incredible movies that would play in these games, and characters would be talking, and it was very close to an anime in a video game form. And that's Ballas' claim to fame. The gameplay itself is okay. But this this game for me was like playing Ballast 3 with my friends in a basement and just kind of marveling at the cinemas going, oh my god, it's like watching an anime. That's what we said back in, you know, the, the very early 90s and stuff like that. And that's Ballast's claim to fame. And you know what? I really, really want to collect this uh, in the, the, this big collection form here. Happy to get it because it means something to me from my childhood. Okay, the last of the last items here, a, a bit of music going on here. And I picked this up from Play Asia. It was one of those things where you're on Play Asia late at night and you see an item and you're like, okay. And so I picked up the CD soundtrack for Street Fighter Turbo right here. And this was on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, and a game I, I imported back in the day. And you know, some people say that they play a game a lot. The Super Nintendo versions of Street Fighter 2, 
I spent, I'm no, I'm no lie, thousands of hours on it. Thou I played them for years. And people would come over and we would play for six hours every day. We would do that for Street Fighter 2. It was such a big deal to take that arcade game, finally came to the Super Nintendo. So I have a lot of memories, you know, listening to the soundtrack back then, all the music and, you know, you know, obviously not the arcade soundtrack, but it was okay. It was, uh, you know, the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom music, and I was really happy to pick this up. I was like, yeah, this is going in the car. I have a CD player in the car. I know, I'm old school that way. Okay, two vinyl soundtracks here to show. Here's the first one. This was crazy. The artwork is ridiculous and over the top, and that is for Splatterhouse. The arcade soundtrack right here, really crazy artwork going on, kind of captures, you know, the 80s for when this was released. And yes, Splatterhouse, I know we've all, all us retro guys talk about Splatterhouse. Oh, but they're like, oh my God, they're talking about Splatterhouse again. And it was, this was a big deal. If you like Friday the 13th and gore movies back in the 80s, which most of us did, this was our game. It was a side view action game going through a haunted house and every manner of disgusting beasts and creatures was coming after you. Over the top blood, this game was ridiculous and one from my childhood and one where I really remember the music, especially I remember the TurboGrafx music and then I got to play the arcade game years later and uh, real classic stuff. So yeah, definitely one to go with the video game soundtracks. <laughs> Okay, the final item, the final item. My friend, uh, Targ's Gauntlet, showed this on Twitter that he picked this up. His wife picked this up. I want to congratulate him on his new child for him and his wife. I think that's really, really wonderful. I'm not showing any pictures of them on here. You know, that's for them to show that kind of thing. But I want to thank them for showing this soundtrack. I didn't even know this was available. I got it off Amazon. Neon Genesis Evangelion, or I used to call it Evangelion back in the day. This, the, the vinyl soundtrack of this. This is great stuff. I'm just going to show this in all of its glory here. This soundtrack has been playing. I've already opened it up. We've been playing it quite a bit here. It's so amazing to see my daughter dancing, dancing to the opening of Neon Genesis Evangelion. It is so cute to me and so wonderful. And we were all dancing the other day to this soundtrack and uh, yeah, that opening song and all that. And it's so funny how much, uh, you know, that soundtrack is already, you know, with my new, you know, new family. Uh, but this is an anime I discovered back in the day, back in the day. And I really loved this anime right until the end when it got really, really weird. Uh, but I, it's so iconic, it's so classic, and I just want to show it here. I want to thank Tark Scotland and his wife once again for showing this on Twitter. So I will ask you guys, what are some new game stuff things that you have picked up? Some new merch, some new soundtracks, some new toys? Let me know down below. That's my stuff for today. So anyways, guys, until next time.